There are so many coffee products today. Especially when it comes to drippers, it can be overwhelming. So I've chosen three drippers that are not as famous as the Hario V60 and the Kalita Wave, and today I'll be reviewing them. Here we have the Kavik Flower, the Origami, and the Monique Tetra Drip. If you've been thinking about expanding your dripper collection, then stick around, because I'm gonna go into the pros and cons of each one of them. Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about the Kavik Flower, the Origami and the Monique Tetra Drip. A few weeks ago I compared the Hario V60 and the Kalita Wave. And while I think those two drippers are good to start out with, most people sooner or later want to upgrade the drip collection. The cool thing about these drippers is that they each have their own kind of strengths. So today I'll be reviewing each one of them and I'll also talk about the pros and cons and how they compare. The first model I want to start with is the Kavik Flower. On the surface, the Kavik Flower looks a whole lot like the Hario V60, and I was a little bit hesitant about investing in it. But the reason I did it anyway is because Kavik produces these filters here, which are my favorite filters. As most of you probably know by now, Hario changed their production a few years ago, which meant that the filters suddenly became really bad and slow. Another company popped up and started producing good filters, and that company was Kavik. As far as I know, they are actually producing the filters in the same factory where Hario produced their old ones. The Kavik flower has got its name because of the internals, which looks kind of like a flower seen from the upside. The model is also available in ceramic and a lot of different colors, and it's even more striking in that material. It is a cone-shaped dripper like the Hario V60, and of course there will be many similarities in terms of flavor. When I first got it, it wasn't immediately clear if there were any big differences, but I decided to do a side-by-side -side comparison, where I brewed exactly the same coffee on the Harry V60 and the flower at the same time. Then I would blind test the resulting cup, and it actually turned out that the Kavik flower was my preferred cup most of the times. Compared to the V60, the flavor is more balanced, the acidity is less sharp, and it's more integrated in the whole cup. The body is also a little bit better. In terms of flavor, I would say it's a little bit closer to that flat bottom Kalita Wave profile that I talked about in the previous video compared to the Hario V60. If you're curious about this experiment, then check out my story on Instagram where I go into a few more details. Another cool thing about the Kavik Flower is that it seems to have a better airflow compared to the V60. That means that you can grind a little bit finer and still finish it around the same time and get a little bit better extraction. So to sum up the pros of this dripper, it's made by a company that really cares about coffee. If you're already buying the Kavik paper filters, I think it makes sense also to take a look at the other products. As I mentioned in my blind test, it did perform better than the V60. It's also a beautiful product, especially in the ceramic versions and all the nice colors. Regarding the downsides, there are not that many, but I think it's a little bit annoying that the handle goes up this far. It looks cool, but it makes it difficult to fold the filter over the edges. When I brew with a Gabby Drip Master, I like to fold the filter over the edges so it kind of like balances evenly on the top of the dripper. The way I get around this problem is by using smaller filters. So I use the size 1 filters instead, and they will only go up a few centimeters towards the top. Another downside is that many people probably already have a Hario V60. So in that sense, it might seem a little bit weird to expand your collection with a dripper that's so similar to the V60 in many ways. Now, time for the verdict. Flow rate, I'm going to give it 4 out of 5. Ease of use is also 4 out of 5, because you can basically just do what you do with the V60. Instagram factor is probably a 4 out of 5. It does look really good in ceramic. And X factor, I'm only going to give it a 3 out of 5, because it... In many ways, it's a similar product to something we already know. So to sum it up, the Kavik Flower gets 15 out of 20 possible points, which is pretty respectable. The next product is this one here, the Origami. It looks very cool, and you've probably seen it on Instagram before. This dripper is also a Japanese product. It is made by a company called Trunk Coffee, which is a roaster and coffee shop in Nagoya. The origami became really famous in 2019 when it was used by Du Jianing to win the World Brewers Cup. 
At first, when I saw this product, I was a little bit skeptical. It seems more or less just to look like a, an over-designed V60, but it actually has a few really cool tricks up the sleeve. What's so special about this stripper is that it can hold both cone-shaped filters, like this. When you brew with it this way, it acts a lot like a V60, but just with a little bit of a better airflow and a more balanced flavor. But then you can also use wave-shaped filters, like this. When you drop the filter in, the different edges here will actually hold the paper perfectly. When you brew with the Kaleida Wave, sometimes the filter can be a little bit annoying. It has a tendency to lose its shape, but that's not going to happen with the Origami. One downside though is that sometimes it tends to cling to the sides and that can slow down the airflow quite a bit. But overall, the Origami is kind of like a two-in-one device that you can both use as a flat bottom brewer and a cone-shaped one. Now let's talk a little bit about the downsides to this brewer, because in my opinion it does have a few flaws. So for instance, it doesn't have any handle. I mean, it looks very cool, but a handle would be nice, because coffee brewers tend to get very hot and you don't want to burn yourself, right? I saw that the origami company said that they removed the handle because it gets in the way when you're brewing, but I never experienced that. I mean, you can get pretty close with the gooseneck kettle without any problems, or you can just turn the handle around to the other side. So I don't really think that's a big deal. Another thing that's really annoying is that it doesn't have any base. So this is both a good and bad thing. It's good because that's what gives the dripper this unique look here. Uh, but in daily life it's also a little bit annoying when you're brewing. When you put the dripper down into your carafe, it's difficult to make sure that it's 100% even. I've seen quite a few pictures on Instagram where the origami is tilted slightly and I think when you pay a lot of attention to all the small details in your brewing process then having a brewer that is slightly off to one side doesn't really make any sense. Of course you can buy the wooden collar that origami produces but it's just a little bit annoying that you have to spend money on something that should be included. Also that wooden collar has its own problems. It doesn't hold on perfectly to the dripper so you can still have it slightly off center if you're not careful. Many people end up buying this product here, produced by a small company called Broken Gooseneck in Malaysia. It's actually a 3D printed base for the origami, and when you use that, it will actually hold the dripper really well. If you live in the US, it's not that easy to find a place that sells the origami, and if you also have to order a 3D printed product from a Malaysian webshop, well, then you're kind of like looking at a little bit of a project rather than just buying a dripper. Another downside is that I have a feeling that this product is a little bit fragile. Personally, I have a history of destroying drippers, and since I'm a little bit clumsy in the morning, I can be slightly worried about this one here. Another thing that's a little bit of a downside for me is that it's hard to share recipes for the origami because you have so many different ways to brew it. So for instance, is the recipe for a cone-shaped filter, or is it for a clear wave filter? Is it for a Kaleida Wave filter size 155 or 185? Well, you know, there are many different options, so it's hard to tell. Okay, time for the verdict. Flow rate, I would give it 5 out of 5 if we're just talking about the V60 shaped filter. But when we also factor in the wave shaped filter, it tends to slow things up quite a bit. So I'll have to deduct some points and I'll only give it 3 out of 5. Ease of use, I'll give it 2 points out of 5. There are just so many different ways you can use it, so that doesn't really offer an easy user experience. For advanced brewers it's very good, but for beginners it might not be the best option. Instagram factor, I'm going to give it 5 out of 5. It looks really cool and you can get it in a ton of different colors, and when you combine it with various 3D printed uh, bases or the wooden base, it will look pretty cool on your Instagram feed. X factor, I'm also going to give it 5 out of 5. There aren't any other products, as far as I know, that does the same thing, so of course it's going to have a top rating. So in total, the Origami gets 15 out of 20 possible points, so that means it's on par with the Kaffee Flower. The last dripper for today is this one here, the Monique Tetra Drip. Monique is also a Japanese company, and they produce kind of like interesting outdoor gear. The name stands for Minimal Unique Equipment, so that mm, kind of makes sense. The Tetra Drip is kind of special compared to the other drippers because it's specifically made for travel. The cool thing about it is that it can fold up like this 
you can take it apart and then fold up here and then it won't take up any space in your luggage. The total weight of this version here in plastic is 25 grams so it won't make any difference at all and it doesn't take up any space. There's also a stainless steel version which I believe weighs in at 40 grams which still isn't very much. Besides being good for travel it's also very good for thermal stability so the dripper doesn't steal any heat from the brew water when you're brewing your coffee. That's probably not something people who are camping care much about. But as coffee geeks who want to have cool stuff at home, I think it's something worth considering. The titra drip is really easy to assemble. It just clicks into place like this here. Despite looking kind of flimsy, it's actually really solid. I've been using this for traveling for more than a year and it held up really well on the road. Another good thing about it is that because of this design, because it's so lightweight, you can't really destroy it by dropping it to the ground like you can with a lot of the ceramic or glass drippers. You can just see how it will just bounce like this. To get the best results, you should use cone-shaped filters. I recommend the filters from Kefik because they have that good flow rate. And when you put them in, you add the water, they will take on this triangular shape here. And even though the flow rate is not the fastest in the world, it's very consistent and it's quite practical when you're traveling. You don't have access to a good gooseneck kettle. You can just dump in the water in two or three goes and it will still come out with a reasonable contact time. At first, you could think that this is only good for travel. But what I realized is that I really like the flavor profile of the cup it tends to create. So I actually also use it at home quite often. Because the flow rate is slower than most other drippers, it tends to get more body out of the cup. But it also has some of those cone-shaped characteristics, such as a longer aftertaste and a bit more interesting texture in the acidity. To sum it up, I think the Monique Tetra Drip makes really good coffee. It's different from the other drippers I have at home. It's super light and practical for travel. It is very hard to destroy and I think it's kind of like a cool and inventive product. So what are the downsides of the Tetra Drip? Well, I think in this color here it might look a little bit dull, but actually you can get it in stainless steel or in red or yellow. So I wouldn't say that it's ugly per se, it's just not as premium as some of the other drippers. The flow rate is a bit slow, but I don't really see that as a downside because it's meant for travel, so it makes sense that it's not that fast. Time for the verdict. Flow rate, I'm gonna give it a 3 out of 5. Ease of use, I'm gonna give it 4 out of 5. It's very easy to use, almost any technique will give you good results. Instagram factor is also gonna be a 4 out of 5. It's not the prettiest dripper in the world, but it will get the conversation going in your feet. And X factor is gonna be a 5 out of 5, because there are no other drippers that do the same thing as well as this one. I know there are other travel drippers out there and some companies have copied the Tetra Drip, but I think this is the original, this is the gold standard for cool travel drippers. Total score is 16 points out of 20 possibles. Today's winner is Tetra Drip, and these two come in at 15 points. But of course this is all just silly nonsense and my own subjective experience. I probably brew more with this one at home, I think it's a more fun product. But both these ones here will make really good coffee as well. Have you tried any of these? Which one is your favorite? I'll be curious to know. I'm planning to do more drip up reviews in the future as well. So if you want to tell me about some cool products then let me know down below. If you like this little review comparison then leave a thumbs up. And if you want more content like this in the future then make sure to hit that subscribe button as well. And I'll see you in another video very soon.